Hi guys. Um, if you're watching this video, it's because I got jury duty and I'm sorry I couldn't be here with you today. So we have a substitute. Um, for some reason, if you're watching this and we didn't have the sub show up, make sure you tell a friend, remind them, you know, that they should be going on to Portal or YouTube to get caught up. Um, I'll videotape lessons from any day I'm out and they'll always be on YouTube and also on Portal. Um, yesterday we talked about um, section 1-4, day one, and we talked about um, sketching graphs. So it's kind of the same thing here today. We're going to be still sketching graphs. So our topic is still to just sketch, you know, kind of get an estimation of what it's going to look like. But we're going to um, apply it to a real world function, so like a, a word problem. So, um, hey or hi, I don't know how you pronounce this person's name, is test driving a car. Um, she, okay, is by, uh, thinking to buy. So she's thinking of buying a car. She decides to accelerate to 60 miles per hour. So if we're accelerating to 60 miles per hour, that's going to be the fastest that um, she's going to go. And then we're going to decelerate to stop um, to test its acceleration and the brakes of the car. So she's going to speed up to 60, and then she's going to, you know, go ahead and decelerate to figure out, you know, how slowly the car slows down and um, how the brakes work. It takes her 15 seconds to reach the maximum speed. So if we look at our um, graph that we have here, the time is going to be our x values. So we can see that it's taking um, her 15 seconds to reach her maximum speed, and the speed is the y values. So she's going to hit 60 miles per hour. So that's a point we can put on the graph, 15 comma 60. And we know that as she starts driving, she's going to start at zero from a stopping position, and she's going to be going up, 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 up to reach that 60. So she's going faster, faster, faster. So it kind of looks like a linear line here. And then what happens is for the next 15 seconds, um, so another 15 seconds will pass, then she'll be decelerating in about 30 seconds later, she is now um, testing those brakes out and stopping. So um, it has a couple words we've seen before, y-intercept. Um, so the y-intercept is where um, she's starting the test drive and that would be at zero, zero. So on the y-axis, we see that we're at zero. Obviously the car stopped, she's not jumping in a moving car, that wouldn't make any sense. And then she's in that stopped car and she's speeding, 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 speeding up, um, getting to what we call the maximum point or the max um, extrema. So we have a, a maximum extrema or maximum point. We also see um, that, um, hey or hi, I don't know how you say the person's name. Um, I would ask them, you know me guys with names, but um, is increasing. Um, so we are increasing the speed um, until uh, for the first 15 seconds. And then after that, we see that it's going to be that the speed is decreasing. Um, and we're decreasing it kind of at what they call um, a uniform rate. Um, also like a constant rate. Uh, that's why it looks like a line, a linear rate where it has that constant slope. So this one, the slope's going down, this one slope's going up. It's just, it's just decreasing um, the speed. So the speed's going down. And then until she reaches a stop, at which point she's checking out her brakes. And then if we look at um, end behavior, because we can't have like, we can't move over here. We can't say as X approaches negative infinity because we don't talk about negative time. That's called not um, defined. So we saw that in um, Friday's lesson and video. So I can't have negative time. And also if I keep going to the positive side of the graph, the car is stopped. So there's nothing to see after 30 seconds, the car is now stopped. So that's also not defined. And I'll push up a little bit. I think I'm on the end of the screen. So both sides of the graph are what we call not defined. And that's because as um, hey starts at zero miles per hour and ends at zero miles per hour, there is no end behavior. So remember end behaviors when we're seeing those arrows carrying on in different directions. We worked on that a little bit yesterday and on Friday. Um, this is um, a situation that's real life. So um, she's not going to keep driving the car. The test drive is over and that is all there is to that problem. 
So just remember time can't be negative and because the vehicle stops, um, you're gonna go ahead and um, you know, um, not have anything past the 30 second mark. Okay, your homework tonight is page 38 through 39. It's gonna be 11 through 16. Um, you're gonna be comparing graphs. Um, so there's a lot to compare here and a lot of words that we're gonna look at. Mostly x-intercepts, y-intercepts, um, you know, end behavior, slope, and stuff like that. So we're gonna be comparing these graphs and comparing two functions. We talked a little bit about this before. A lot of times we'll name them different things. So like right now, I'll call this the f of x function. It's um, represented by the table you see there. And then if you look at the g of x function, the g of x function is this line or this graph we're looking at. So we're kind of looking at two different ways to um, represent a function. And they give them different names so that now we can talk about them. So if we go ahead and talk about just the x-intercepts here, we had another section, um, it was on our quiz, where we had a word problem, we had to find the x and y-intercepts. And so I don't know if you remember that, but the x-intercept would be the one that has a value for x and is associated with a, a zero for the y. So this would be your x-intercept. I mean, we could really also talk about how this is the y-intercept, and we could even sketch this a little bit, go down to zero, negative one, and we could go over to three, zero, and we'd have a nice little sketch of this f of x function. So you could graph it if that helps you to kind of compare and see these. But when you look at the f of x function, which I'm doing in red, um, the x-intercept is gonna be three. And then if you look at the g of x function, which is this graph right here, I'll highlight it, it's our graph that's in purple. Um, you can look right at the graph and on the left-hand side, you can see that the x-intercept's at negative two. So sometimes we visually take the x and y-intercepts off the graph um, if it's a visual representation, um, or sometimes we're looking at a chart. And then what do they want you to do? They just want you to say that the f of x, um, the f of x graph, um, so the f of x uh, function, um, has a greater x-intercept than the g of x function. So that's kind of what we get from there. Sorry, I have a cough drop in. So as the f of x intersects the x-axis, it's at a point, if you look, that is further to the right so our f of x is further to the right of the g of x. And I think that's a little hard to fill in. So honestly, I would just want you to find the x-intercept for any kind of assessment, and then just be able to tell me which one has the greater x-intercept or maybe where it is in comparison to the other function. So the f of x, x-intercept, <laughs> is to the right of the g of x. So either of those in words would be fine. Now what they're gonna have us do in this next one is we're still gonna go ahead and I'll do some color changing. We'll look at this f of x, so this is a new function. We'll do this one in green. And we're gonna be looking at what's called the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is going to be the one that has a zero for the x and the y is gonna be negative one. So that is your y-intercept. And again, I could put that on the y-axis. For me, I'm a visual learner. And this would be our x-intercept because the one that's associated with the zero. And if you've been a new student and didn't take the first quiz with me, we did x and y-intercepts then too. They were on our quiz. So I like to kind of do a little sketch so then I can see what's going on. So if you go ahead and we'll maybe make, um, we'll make this one purple again. We'll make this g of x one purple. The purple worked out nice. If you go ahead and compare, um, your y-intercept is four, and for the f of x, the green one, your y-intercept is negative one. So something you could tell me in words, and we're gonna have varying answers here, is you could go ahead and tell me that the f of x function has a what? Smaller or less than um, y-intercept than the g of x function. So you're kind of comparing, you know, x and y intercepts. Um, you might also be comparing slopes. That's going to be our third one that we do. So we're comparing 
kind of these key features, they call them, to the graph. So the way we would write this to fill in the book's way of doing it, g of x, which is this purple one, intersects the y-axis at a higher point than the f function. So this is the f function that I went ahead and drew in. And because I'm a visual learner, it really helps me to, to do that so I can kind of compare them. Okay, when we look at slope, slope has a little bit more to it. Um, I don't know if I have a pink marker. Do I have a pink marker? I think I need a couple colors. Um, we'll go ahead and go red with this. <laughs> so we go on over and we'll make this one red again. Here's a different function, the f of x function. Now they want to know the slope. So we've got two things you could do. You could graph a couple points and find the slope visually using rise over run. So you could go ahead and graph and use rise over run. Or you could use slope formula. And the way I remember slope formula is it's a picnic table. So this is your picnic table, which reminds me the X's are on the bottom. Those are kind of those cross braces you'd see on a picnic table. And we put two wine glasses on top of the picnic uh, table. Maybe they're fruit punch glasses for you guys. <laughs> and the reason they're wine glasses is how old do you have to be to legally drink? 21. So that reminds me to go ahead and put 21, two and one and then there's subtraction in between. So I remember as a picnic table with wine glasses on top, I have a former student um, that went to college and said, Ms. Shackton, this is a cool way to remember the slope formula. And so it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then you could go ahead and take these points. This is x1, this is y1, this is x2, this is y2, first and second point, and you can just plug in. So you would do negative one, minus a minus would make it a plus, um, x2, which is 0, minus a minus, which would make it a plus. And we're about to see that the slope for our f of x function is one third. So if you feel comfortable with slope formula, as a little reminder, otherwise you're probably going to graph these points. If we put 0, negative 1 on the graph, remember that's called your y-intercept. I'll make you a little note. And we take our x-intercept, which is 3, 0. So that's your x-intercept. You can put those two things on your graph, and that's enough to sketch this. And then using rise over run, we would go up 1 and over 3. So we can still see that this f of x function has a slope of 1 third. And you can see they're doing that a little bit on what we'll call the purple one, the g of x function. They're trying to kind of bring you back to algebra 1. So to find slope, watch this. You go up 1, 2, and over 1. So that's up two over one. So that slope is going to be two. Now I'll show in the margin how to do that with the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 using slope formula. I could use these points. I'll call this x1 and y1 and I'll call this x2 and y2. And so the y2 would be four minus the two and you have zero. I'm just plugging in minus a minus and when we clean that all up, let's go around off the chart, you have two over one. So you can see either way, I can either use slope formula or graphing to figure out my slope. Both of those concepts are an algebra one concept that you're supposed to have some prior knowledge. But remember, we're the year of COVID class that took algebra one possibly online. We have a lot of holes. I'll go back over finding slope. But finding slope is something that we should be able to do. Definitely if we want to go do well for dual enrollment in the PERT test. Um, also, it's kind of going to be expected that you know how to find slope going into pre-calc next year. And we'll continue to work on it. But if we look at these slopes, we can obviously see that g of x has the greater slope. So g of x has a greater slope. It's going to increase faster. See how the rate of increase is bigger than that one. So we'll go over the one that you can check now. So what I would recommend is Maybe the sub wants to pause the video um, and you guys want to go ahead and put a couple things on this graph. I'm going to make this one orange, the f of x. So maybe you want to graph these two things. I'm not going to tell you what those two things are. I'm going to pause for a little bit, but maybe put those on your graph. And then we'll be able to compare it to the g of x f graph where we can go ahead and see what these x and y intercepts are. 
So if you guys want to go ahead and pause and give that a shot, if not, he can just keep moving forward or she, whoever's stepping today. When you look at the orange graph, we know because this is zero, negative two, we would go zero, negative two, which is the y-intercept. We can go one, zero, which is the x-intercept. And then we can see this graph is going up like this. That is your f of x graph. If you go over to your red graph, it's already graphed for you. That's your g of x graph. You can see you have um, a y-intercept of 0, 2. That's your y-intercept because it's going through the y-axis. And this is your x-intercept where it's crossing at 4, 0. So now we could compare those. If I was to compare those out with words, f of x, which is the orange one, has what? Let's look. Well, if we look at the x-intercepts, their x-intercept for the orange one is 1, and for the red one, g of x, it's 4. So f of x has a smaller um, x-intercept. It's going to be more over to the left, because there it is, than g of x. And if we look at the y-intercepts, the y-intercept for the, function, the f of x function, so for f of x, the y-intercept is smaller than the g of x. So let's see if we can go ahead and see down here which one would be the right, um, the correct um, multiple choice to pick. So let's see if we can see about anything with x and y-intercepts. Okay, here we go. The x-intercept of g of x is greater than the x-intercept of f of x. So g of x is this one. We look at the x-intercept. Is this greater than the x-intercept of f of x? Yes, right? So that would be a correct answer. So we do want to pick this one. The y-intercept of f of x, here's f of x. So the y-intercept, is this greater than the x of x, ooh, the x-intercept of g of x? So x-intercept is 4, is, is negative 2 greater than 4? No, we're not going to pick that one. Both are decreasing. Decreasing means the graph needs to be going down. So which one's decreasing? Not the orange, but the red. G of x decreases. Because if you look, it's going down. From left to right, it's decreasing. But when we look at this one, what's going on with f of x? f of x is increasing. So again, we don't want to pick this because they're not both decreasing. f of x is increasing while g of x is decreasing. That sounds like a good answer. And rate of change, maybe you don't know this, but rate of change just talks about the slope. So now we're going to have to go back to our graphs and find the slope. So let's find the slope of f of x. We'll find f of x slope. And we'll also find g of x slope. And so if I go, and I'm just going to use the visual since they're already graphed for me. If I go to f of x, I'm going to go up 1, 2, and over 1. So that slope is 2 over 1, which is just 2. And if I go to the red one, I start at the left point, and I go down 1, 2. When you go down, it's negative. And I go over 1, 2, 3, 4. And I could reduce that to be negative 1 over 2. So are the slopes the same? No. Which one's going to have the faster uh, rate? Definitely this one. This one's going to be going up faster. See how it's a steeper graph? So g of x has a faster rate of change? No. f of x has a faster rate of change? Yes. And that's how we're comparing these. And this is very, very tricky. Before we go into our test on September 2nd, I will give you a review sheet and you'll get some more practice on this, but definitely try the homework tonight. Um, I think there's about five or six of these to practice. You know, can you find the slope, x-intercepts and y-intercepts? Okay, other than that, we have one more to look at. And I think it's a little bit easier than that last one. That last one was a lot. So when we go on over to our last example, and this is in section 1-4, so tomorrow we will be in teacher-made notes. So if you have not printed the teacher made notes, which have been up there since last Wednesday, you need to go ahead and print those tonight or you're going to feel like I'm going too fast tomorrow. 
So the expectation is that when we come in tomorrow, everybody will have those ready. They're on portal. And when you go on portal, they'll look like this. And if you don't have a printer, you can just hand copy them, grab some graph paper, get those done tonight. Most of you did it because it was a grade, but some of you didn't. So if you didn't, you still want to go ahead and print those or hand copy them just so that you can keep up when we start to learn that lesson on Wednesday. Hopefully I'll be here for you, be there with you. Okay, this G graph is already graphed, so we can see a bunch of things. And this F of X graph, I would like to just put it on here um, or graph it somewhere. Uh, I wish I had another little piece of graph paper. Oh, maybe I have one over here, let me see. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Um, I forgot I had these, these are like little graph post-its. So right now, if you want one, you can come pop up and I'll leave them in the front of the room. Um, they're right in the basket in the front. Or I'll leave them up here. They're on top of, you'll see them. If you want one, go ahead and grab one. Um, if the sub wants to pass them out too, you can. Okay, we're going to go ahead and graph and we're going to have an x-intercept at negative 3.4. Right about there. We're going to have a y-intercept at um, 0 and then 1.5. You can always just sketch it off to the side. You're going to have a relative maximum at negative 2.3 and 4.7. Negative 2.3 and 4.7. Negative 2.3 and 4.7, about right there. So this is our maximum, relative maximum. This is our y-intercept. This is our x-intercept. And now we're going to have a relative minimum. Um, negative 0.4, I mean, they couldn't really make these numbers any better, and 1.1. So 1.1 is going to be below that y-intercept, so maybe right about there. Well, that's a fun point, not. So that's a relative minimum right there. Okay. Now we'll um, attach the graphs. We'll use our end behavior, so I'll help with that. As we're approaching negative infinity, so as I'm traveling this way, the graph is going to negative. What does that mean? It's going down. The graph is going down. When I go the opposite direction, meaning going this way, that would be positive infinity. This is negative infinity. Where's the graph going? Up. So this side's up. So la, 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 connect the dots. La, 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 connect the dots. It looks a little bit like that. So I'll do end behavior one more time. As I approach negative infinity, I go to the left-hand side of the graph. We know the arrow needs to be pointing down. As I move to the positive side of the graph, the arrow needs to be pointing up. Okay, let's compare. The x-intercepts of the f of x function, so that's this one, is what? 